Financing has been put in place to enable the cross-border trade. An oil market collapsed. We don't want any What happened in Venezuela economy's case is that they placed an extremely high degree of dependence on the energy sector. And as a consequence, when oil prices fell, that economy has been known took a terrible hit. Trinidad y Tobago. So the sold to to more people. So it will benefit our economy. This is a seven fifteen in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, that was just a teaser of the upcoming movie. Don't Compete, Create. It's a, a movie that is to be released in November. It focuses, as you would realize, on the economic and therefore the social situation in the country, uh, something that has uh, been happening and, and developing. And as you would see, the juxtaposition with the issues in Venezuela and the unrest in Venezuela with even Venezuelans uh, based in Trinidad and Tobago protesting the Maduro regime and all that is going on. Well, the movie took almost three years to, com to complete. It's the first feature release from Javier Forrester, who produced the movie. He's here along with Aisha Vento, the director of photography, who will give us all the insights and the perspectives as to the, uh, the, the tone of the movie and the imagery and the sense of the mood, whether it's dark, whether it's bright and colorful, and, and, and how you, you create the vibe through, through the, the role of uh, the, the, the camera as well. But good morning to you both. Good to have you morning. on the program uh, morning. this morning. Thanks, uh, and indeed, Javier from uh, Brian Lara Territory, from Cantaro in Santa Cruz, the Bravos uh, from up there as well. So clearly quite a bit of uh, talent coming out of that part of uh, the country. So, Javier, tell us about the movie itself. Right. Uh, well, good morning, Fazil. First, let me just say congratulations to Trinidad and Tobago on their historic gold medal. Indeed. It's very special for us to win gold at a time like this, going through a recession. Um, the film features a society, which is Trinidad and Tobago, coming to terms with an economic storm caused by the very resource that made us a great presence on the, financial, the global financial market. When we say coming to terms, we're referring to the effect that this economic storm has had on the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And when we say economic storm, of course, we're talking about the global oil market collapse that occurred in 2015. Now, this economic storm has been most severe in four areas, crime, youth, employment, and the economy. So the documentary, it deals with these four topics under the umbrella of the recession. Right. While, while we're having our discussion, let's, let's get some of the basic information out of the way as usual so we don't go along along and people want to know when is it going to be released, where right. is it going to be released, how can people access, get more information on it. Right. We have a Facebook page, um, Don't Compete Create. So for Facebook users, social media fans, they will know how to access that. You just type in, in the search bar, Don't Compete Create, and that will come up. So if you like our Facebook page, you will get all the information on the up and coming release. As you rightfully said, it's due to come out in November 2017 this year. And tickets will be available online. Also, we'll have outlets where people can purchase tickets. Those, that information will be announced via the Facebook page in due course. And uh, Aisha Vento, uh, yes. uh, as far as your role as a director of photography, is it, is it a, a specific skill involved in, in, in creating a particular mood? Because sometimes, you know, see, where, you know, there, those, uh, there's a darker mood to a particular movie or a brighter, happier tone. Mm -hmm. How important is that element? To in, in getting across the message you're trying to, to present? I think it's very important. Um, based on the film, you're talking about the economy and crime in Trinidad and Tobago. So we just want it in a way where we could capture or gravitate people to watching the show. And for me, well, this was my first time filming. And I never did any practice with it at all. I just took up a camera and just st started helping them film. And that was basically... And w where did you get your inspiration? Because obviously, as someone involved in photography, as someone involved uh, looking to develop a career in film, you would uh, either have uh, may benefit from either formal training or informal training via watching how it's done by some of the best in the world. Uh, where, where did you yes, get your inspiration? Yes, well, I enjoy watching movies, and I like to watch just different types of movie genres, everything like that. And I just decided that one day, maybe one day, I could be a director or filmmaker and he had his camera so I just borrowed his camera and I just started 
taking pictures doing photography, which I'm currently doing right now at the Reopen Open Campus, and filming as well, just learning it on my own. No one ever really taught me how to film or and well, like I said, I'm learning photography, but filming is something that I learned on my own. Happy with the end product? Very happy. <laughs> but, I, but I suppose that <laughs> as, a, as, a, as, a, as, so, as someone in, in the business, no one is ever totally satisfied because it's all, it's all a, a learning process. Yeah. We, we'll get back to, 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 to what more we can expect from, from you uh, when, when we, as we continue our discussion. But Javier Forrester, uh, look, just looking at the trailer, mm -hmm. some might say, well, you know, you're trying to make it seem that Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela are exactly the same thing as far as the level of chaos. How would you respond to that? That, that, that this is alarmist, it's a misrepresentation of the reality. No, this is a warning signal. This is a message to Trinidad and Tobagoans that we are not in the position Venezuela is in. And that is because we, in my opinion, our size has affected us and also the Heritage and Civilization Fund. So our, our politics has enabled us, our decisions, I should say, politically, to not be in a crisis that Venezuela is in today. But it's, it's, it's for us to really take stock of what we have and to make use of our opportunities. So being in a position that we are in today where we are facing the recession, but we are weathering the storm, I think, quite well, trying to be Goniens have to understand that this is a time for us to invest in our country. This is a time for us to be patriotic. This is a time for us to take the economic situation trying to be going seriously and stop blaming everyone else for the problems that we are in and sort of kind of get out there and do something to assist the economy. But you, but you so know, in, uh, Javier, mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago is a very political place. Indeed it is. And uh, just looking at some of the, the advanced information that you provided us, mm -hmm. that you've, you've interviewed a number of people, David yes. Abdullah, That's right. Dr. Roger Hossein, Nicole Dyer Griffith, uh, Brigadier John Sandy, Jabari mm -hmm. Fraser, Inspector Roger Alexander, right. and, and quite a few others. Mm -hmm. With the exception of, uh, uh, well, not even any exception, because uh, Brigadier John Sandy was with the previous administration. That's right. That's right. All the PNM people will be saying that this is about bashing the government. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Actually, the documentary is actually very balanced in terms of political representations, and that was intentional because I realized that that would be the first thing someone would say in terms of a lot of people in this documentary are really anti government, if you want to call it that, from different parties. The MSJ is there, the AOI. Well, I know yeah. she, um, Nicole Dagriffin recently left the AOI, but at the time, she yeah. was with the AOI. Um, she Dr. might even not, not even be in the COP <laughs> because apparently there's a legal challenge to her being in the elections on, over the weekend, but we, we'll see what will happen. That's with right, that. right. And Dr. Hosa, and he's actually a member of the COP. Um, attorney Keith Scotland is actually in the film as well. He is a PNM. Daniel Khan is a um, People's Partnership. Um, highly, he always you know, brandishes himself yeah. as that. So it's balanced. It's balanced. Um, the fact of the matter is, I just want to go back to something you said, Fazir, about. Yeah. Trinidad and Tobago not you know, looking like if it's like Venezuela in the trailer. Let's examine exactly where Trinidad and Tobago is right now. A lot of the problems that Venezuela is going through, such as the inability to feed themselves, the high importation of food, and the oil dependency. Trinidad and Tobago is going through those same problems. In 2017... Not to that level, though. Not to that level. But as I said, it's a warning signal for us to not reach there. In 2017, Cabinet had a joint select committee meet with officials from the Ministry of Agriculture, Karen e. Green and Nabdevco, and they expressed that young people are not getting involved in agriculture. If you look at successive budgets over the last 10 years, agriculture ranks lower and lower each year. It's now 3% average of the total allocations. And our food, in food importation is increasing each year. Our estimated food, food importation bill this year is $6 billion. All right? And we are heavily dependent on things like poultry and ports. Now, nobody likes chicken more than a treaty. But imagine we have not done enough to boost our po local poultry production amidst all the ill treatment that's going with poultry worldwide. Furthermore, we are second behind Venezuela in terms of our high revenues from oil in comparison to other products. And then finally, we have plenty of social programs to fund. There's a part in the film where David Odula says that the solution to this problem is not to put pressure on the backs of the working class. But we, these, food, these social programs, we need in our country to feed our families. We need the URP, we need the CPEP, we need the gate, we need the food cards. So the challenge for us is how do we continue funding these social programs during a recession without resort to cutbacks and entrenchment? So the documentary seeks to address that through the various persons you mentioned. And you've been involved in a number of projects. The Beautiful Struggle Foundation yes. is a Christian charity for youth and yes. disabled youth. And uh, you are also involved with Strugglers Productions, right. uh, which is uh, a promotion business. That's right. Uh, what, what would have prompted you uh, to, to actually an undertake the production of, the, of, of this film? Well, for me, um, Beautiful Struggle, as you rightfully said, is a charity foundation for youth and disabled youth. That was this, the foundation for everything. That started everything. We began doing a lot of charity work in the communities. 
And out of that, Struggles Productions was born. And what Struggles Productions really means is it is support for people who achieve under difficult circumstances. Trinidad did that today. We struck goal during a recession. I don't think people realize how amazing that is. So we achieved under difficult circumstances. Doing the film, I did it out of necessity. When I looked and I saw the situation going on in Venezuela, it was very troubling to me as a Trimbegonian. If Venezuela sneezes, we can catch a very bad cold. And we see that going on today with worries of mass migration, possible increased coastal crimes. So when President Maduro, when I heard he was coming to Trent Tobago, it gave me an opportunity to capture that, 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 that essence in film. I also decided to do the film based on the impact the recession was having individually on people. We have been talking about diversification for years. And when I went to Petrotrin to do interviews for this film, I spoke to a senior official at Petrotrin, I wouldn't call his name, because mm. he asked me anonymous. And he told me that the most we have diversified is actually just with byproducts in oil. And while that is to be applauded, the fact of the matter is, most of the citizenry, we expected diversification outside of the oil market. So for me, the film was, it was needed. They say necessity is the mother of all invention, and, and that was my, my, my inspiration behind the film. And in a couple of minutes as we have, let's get a quick word from, from Aisha Vento before I get back to Javier for, for a final thought. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Aisha, uh, as you said, this was an opportunity for you. Um, was, was it something that was intimidating? Uh, because if you're, you know, you're getting involved in actual movie production and, 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 and doing all that that is required, was it an intimidating experience? Yes, it was, because it was my first time, and I've never done anything like this. So I didn't really have the knowledge of how to frame someone within the shot and everything like that. So I just looked at YouTube videos and just practiced with the camera how to shoot someone within the frame, try to get the background for the pers behind the person and just make the shot look good. And so yeah, it was intim intimidating at first, but as, I, it, as it went along, everything just came natural. YouTube brother teaches you everything. Yes, a pipe <laughs> gone bad home by me and we, we YouTube everything and the fellas show you how to fix it. <laughs> and even then I mess it up. It took a to fix it actually. But before we conclude Javier Forrester, yes. let's remind everybody once again, uh, the premiere is going to be when and how can people, because uh, I'm sure people will be really intrigued by what they saw if they don't know about it already. Yes. And they'll be probably wanting to know how they could get tickets. Just All remind right. us again. So the premiere is going to be November of this year. All information can be found on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash don't compete create. It's, you can type it as one word in the search bar. And we are going to have tickets on sale online. We're also going to have ticket outlets um, that will be advertised on the Facebook page. So really and truly, once you like the Facebook page, you're going to get all the information about the release. Um, we, we don't have a venue that is to be announced. Um, I just want to say... Um, very quickly, yeah. Very quickly. So you're trying, trying to make a film festival. We had entered the festival, but um, we missed some deadlines. So to be eligible for selection, you have to meet the deadline. Yeah. So I just want to say thanks to the Trent Film Festival for all their help. Um, but we're going to go solo and rent an auditorium and release it in an auditorium. Yes, Vigo. indeed. The film festival is going to be in September, as it yes. usually is. Yes, and yes, uh, yes, indeed, yes. let's hope that people will take advantage in November uh, right. when the release. So you can look out for the actual confirmation of the specific date mm -hmm. in November mm -hmm. when the premiere is going to be and when you can actually access uh, the movies. Uh, go onto the, the Facebook page and uh, don't compete. Create all one word. You'll get all the information you require. 727, we'll be back right after this on Morning Edition.